Hey, Deb Bood. I was meaning to talk to you. Uh, what do you want to talk about? I love New York, to be honest with you. I feel like I can take Manhattan. Well, wait till you see the other guy. Hey, Jason! Who the f*** is that guy? Welcome to the Boot Plays, I'm the Boot, and this is my Scream 6 review. Uh, for the record, I'll divide this video up into two parts, the spoiler-free version and the spoiler version. I will mostly get my nitpicks and positives about in the spoiler-free version. I'll just say spoilers at the end, because there's, there's practically nothing. But uh, save this video until you watch the movie, because it is worth your time and worth in theaters. Because that adrenaline rush, whoo boy, that was, that was something to see in theaters. I was gasping, I was doing the head thing, I was like, oh man, is there, are they going to survive? And, yeah. I went to go see the Scream 6 fan screening at Cinemark, and I got a little free poster here. Look at that. We'll dive deep into... We'll uh, talk about also some things I have and I got. So make sure to hit the notification button. Like button. Let me first talk about what the movie's about. The movie's about the Carpenter sisters as they, as they move away to college, uh, as well as Chad and Mindy, and they try to get away from the events of the last film. Uh, recovering from therapy, but yet they know Ghostface is right around the corner, right to get them. And again, this has something to do with their past. Gail Weathers and Kirby pop up in this movie, which is a pleasant surprise. And we have a bunch of new characters, which I absolutely just adore, and they're just absolutely incredible. Uh, before we start the video, I kind of want to show you some things that I got. So, today. Ooh, my ghost face mask. It's not a good ghost face mask, but it fell. Um, it was a last minute Halloween costume, just to say. Um, I got this poster at uh the fan screening, and yes, yeah, you little fo ghost faces in the costume. You can, you can search it up online. There's multiple pictures. There's lots of writing, hidden writing, hidden Easter eggs on here. So cool. Very, very cool screen sex. Oh, yeah. And then, let me show you around here. Look at what I got. I did not buy this. I did not get this. I did not ask to get this. I just have really good connections to um, Spyglass was kind enough to send me one of these and a Hellraiser one, just so you know. But, um, thank you, Spyglass. It's very nice. It's a very beautiful poster, but look at that. That is a humongous poster. Well, uh, there, I, there. I got it. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Uh, so that's some, some, some things I've got. Whoops, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my like, little camera up. So that's some things I've got, uh, thank you. I also have a Hellraiser poster, but that's, like, from last year. So I got that, um, uh, by, uh, someone from Spyglass. I don't exactly know who. I love how on the bottom of the poster it says, Material promotion, um, uh, promotional material only. Do not transfer this material. Any pr transfer of this material is strictly prohibited. Well, somebody is gonna get in trouble, but this poster is amazing. Thank you to somebody in spy class. I don't know who, but thank you. Uh, so let us start talking about the positives, positives of this film, which there's a lot of positives about this film, which I'm very happy about. All right, let's let's start about talk about the positives. I will tell you, definitely, definitely the positive of this film, Ghostface. Regardless of who this person is, this ghost face is extraordinary. Again, I'm, I'm doing the spoiler-free version. This ghost face is an extraordinary force not to be reckoned with and very seamlessly through, uh, very seamlessly goes through the film, but you just never know where he might be. And to be honest with you, in all, 
at the end, it does make sense. But this ghost face is like everywhere, and I just. How is he everywhere? Well, uh. Uh, he's just. This brute force is just. I will tell you, the horn and gore in this film are very, very, very good. Uh, amongst a big change, we usually have some kind of cranberry blood, very bad blood looking stuff. The best kill in the franchise, in my opinion, I still believe is Randy. He had a really good kill, just in my opinion. In my opinion, my opinion, he was he was actually done justice. But otherwise. There was nothing that was live up to ex expectations, but now there is something to live. I think Scream Six definitely beat them in kills. I think maybe in body count. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. But um, yeah, I have to get that out of the way. The how excellent this horror element and all around the horror element and the gore element were done perfectly. Scream 6 is no Terrifier 2. I will admit that. It is no Terrifier 2. But it is a big upgrade from what we've got. Neither is it, a, is it a Halloween. I think it's at the same level as Halloween Kills, in my opinion. Maybe a little bit more bloodier. Because it, it uses the, the, the kind of smallish... It's not really small body count, but it uses its mediocre body count to its advantage. As well as the horror. And let's talk about... The other component of horror, suspense. Scream movies are built on suspense. If Scream movies did not have suspense, nobody would go to Scream movies. It, no, it, it has, like, somebody's behind that mask, and we wait, and it, the suspense, the tensions builds up, and then pop, at one moment, we get it revealed. And that fun feeling, when you, when you know, um, when you get to see the killer, is just something different. Um, something different. Very, very good feeling. Um, uh, so suspense. I will have to say it's really, really good in this film. It, I think I've, I, I, I as I said, as I said, it, I, there was some moments in the film when I was doing the head thing. I was, I was, I was like nervous. I was like, what's gonna, what's happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. And uh, there's like there's one moment that they're all <gasps> because I had to <clears throat> because this film is full of surprises, but some of the surprises I ex uh, expect. And you know what? I like movies that make you think, and this movie really makes you think, and really makes you reconsider the whole franchise. Again, the one rule of Scream is that the movies never are the same. There's always something different in the Scream movies. And, um, this is not really a spoiler, but in most movies, if, if you're, if you're just, if you are just going into this movie without knowing anything, there's usually recaps of movies prior. Like, uh, like, like, they just, they describe the, the, the movie that they're in the characters, they describe themselves as they're in a movie. And in this one, they describe themselves as a requel franchise. In a franchise, anything can happen. Legacy characters, bam. Main characters, why not? Bam. Gone. Gone. And this brute force is not to be reckoned with and is going gonna, is gonna to stay alive. He is going to win in some way or another. And... This brute force, and you can never expect, you, you just can't expect. And I love how they play into that factor, and I think they played into that factor the best, besides all, all the other films. Plot, I, I love the plot in this one. It's pretty fun. Uh, but I will say, um, the action I did lack a little bit for me, but uh, the chase scenes, I consider as the action, and I think why I'm saying they lack a little bit for me is that I'm saying, like, I want more of this. Sometimes I say that. I, 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 just, I need more chase scenes. That was my positives. Now, here are my very, very few negatives. Oh, uh, also for positives, I would like to say the performances are extraordinary in this film. They're just amazing. Okay, here we go. Um, 
I also say positive is the the, the the reveal, the opening credit, the opening scene is amazing. Something you'll never expect. This movie is different, but it feels like a scream movie, which is perfect. And again, no scream movie is ever perfect, uh, but this one, I think, of all the other films in the franchise, I think this is the closest one to being perfect. I know, shocker. No Sydney, no Dewey. We only have Gale, and then we have a couple new characters that we've kind of grown to love. And I will say, you love these characters by the end of the film. And last film, I was like, eh, they're new characters, but Dewey. In this movie, I'm like, yay, I'm really excited to see the Carpenter sisters again. And Chad, I'm really worried for Chad. I don't know. Like, is he is he going to be okay? Is Mindy going to be okay? Is um the new character going to be okay? Is Kirby going to be okay? Is Gail going to be okay? Is the Carpenter sister going to be okay? I, I just don't know. I just don't know. And, um, yeah. Ah, we have to go into love them in this film. That's something I love. How, like, character development. Okay. Back on topic to negatives about the film. I thought they were going to use New York as more of a tool. Granted, they shot this in Toronto or, like, Montreal, so little bit like New York, but barely. Like a Canada in New York, but not. It, it's it hits different, um, and they didn't use it to their advantage. Like as you can see on this poster, it says "Stab the Musical." I'm a fan of musicals. Just saying that I would have loved to see that. Good morning with Gail Weathers. I would have loved to see that. And it says, it also says in the news reporting: grisly murders in the city. Mackenzie family found murdered in a series of stabbings. What? That did not happen in the film. There was no family in the film. That got stabbed. Oh my god, everything is falling. But there's no family that got stabbed in the film. The people who got did get off by Ghostface were individual people. For the most part, but they're 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 also roommates. I feel also that I feel like they could have used the apartment setting a little bit better and saying how it's kind of cramped or like uh, describing it, but like New York they didn't use advantage. I will say also, um, I feel like some of the mo we did lacked a little bit of emotional scenes and talking about character development, but I'm actually fine with that. That's my negative that I don't just don't understand, but I just have to admit it. Otherwise, I don't have anything else to say. Um, Kirby could have used a bit a little bit more. I love Kirby; she's one of my favorite legacy characters of all time. Gail Weathers. Gail Weathers finally had a chase scene in this movie, as seen in the trailer, but, um, she could have been used a little bit more, but, you know what? I am actually not complaining. We Ghostface finally called Gail, and we, they had a chase scene. Two for two. That's all I need in a movie. Thank you. All right. Let's do my final roundup. Action in this movie, I give it a five. Plot in this movie, I give it a five. Horror in this movie, I give it a five. Lessons, four. Suspense, four. Gore, four. And overall, I give it a five. So, granted, I rated. I wanted to do a move. Uh, I wanted to do a video where I rated all the Scream movies. Granted, not happened. But I did rate Scream as five. Scream two as four and a half. Scream 3 as, ugh, uh, uh, I rated it as a 4. I rated it actually, no, 3.5. Scream 5 was a 4. And Scream 4 was 4.5. Now I remember. And, nope, this does not compare to the first film. But, I think this is as close as perfect as they're going to get to a, a, to a perfect Scream film. Because none of them are perfect. And I feel like that's a quality. Like, each movie is perfect, in my opinion. Because it has its disadvantages. It has its, its advantages, and it balances out throughout the film. Uh, I also, so, something I want to also mention qu very quickly. I also love how they utilize the Scream 2's plot of college the the, the 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 main characters go to college in a different city last time it was somewhere else 
This time, it is New York. And they went to college. This was after their first event. So, th yes, this was kind of a reboot. And they, they kind of took... So, literally, the final... Uh, the revealing of the uh, people were... Yes. They were... Uh, Interesting, and the shrine was very utilized, and we have also seen a stage that was utilized. I don't want to spoil much, but they they did, Scream Two really is heavily kind of not kind of influenced in this movie. Uh, but let's talk about that in spoilers. So if you are spoiler free watching, make sure to subscribe to the donation bell if you like button. If you like button. And if you want to continue spoiler watching, let us talk about spoilers. Spoilers! 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 Right off the bat. Okay. Let's go. Uh, oh my god. Oh my god. Our, our, oh my god. Our, our, oh my god. I, I was so shocked about um, the killers. And it was Ethan Landry. It was Quinn Bailey, and it was uh, Wayne Bailey. Those are the people that um, those are the people that were Ghostface. I didn't. I I had this feeling in the back of my head was like, hmm, a, maybe a cop as Ghostface. I feel like that'd actually be pretty cool. I thought that halfway through the film, and then I abandoned that, and I and I said, no, Ethan's got to be the killer. He's got to be the killer. He was, yeah. I did my little victory dance. <laughs> I, I was just really excited. Uh, but then I pondered that idea of um, a cop. It was really cool. And then having someone killed and come back from the dead, sort of, like, their murder being faked. What? I don't think we've seen that. Have we seen that? I don't think we've seen that. I, we've seen person get sort of tormented, and that was in Scream Four. Uh, and like I was saying before, I was saying before, Scream Two is referenced in this film. Main characters go to college. Uh, they're haunt. They're haunted again by Ghostface after their first incident. This story is about revenge, and this time it is revenge for, uh, I think it's Richie, right? What's his name? Scream. Scream. There we go. Scream. Yep, Richie Chris. I don't know, something like that. Uh, R Richie, the, the killer from the first film. There's Amber and Richie. Amber and Richie. And, uh, uh, Richie, uh, was kind of avenged in this film, like, uh, um, and the, that whole little people I said, well, killers, those were his family. And I feel like that was really good. And going back to Billy Loomis's mom, Mrs. Loomis, really good plot point. Again! They're copying kind of what Scream 2 did. The final battle takes on a stage. What happened in Scream 2? Final battle takes on a stage. <gasps> Who'd have thunk? And, yes. Um, we got many new characters. And I love how it connects. And it uses in... It's something It's something different. And I, I just can't figure it out right now. Also, the opening scene was something I never expected. Uh, we have... We... we it was something new. We have the voice changing ghost faced again at the beginning. And then the when when um Samara Weaving's character was killed, which is by the way a very, very bad waste of Samara Weaving. Could have could have used her, could have been a really good killer, just saying. Mm -hmm. Ready or not, here I come. <laughs> uh we see that it's uh Jason. Here it is. Uh and he reveals himself to be the killer. But who'd have thunk? He goes back to his apartment and he's hot. He's called by Ghost Takes and he finds his roommate. He's killed. Decapitated his head. Freaking. 
it was in the fridge, separated and dismembered, and that opening scene, you saw a ghost face. You saw someone, a ghost face got. So a, we got an innocent person get killed and a ghost face get killed. I feel like that was the best opening scene I've, I think I've ever seen. And Gail Weathers being um, brutally, uh, then that chase scene stabbed, that was like my no moment. I, I thought like, I lost Dewey the last film. I can't lose Gay. I can't lose Gail. I almost said Gabe. Whoops. Gail. I can't lose Gail. Uh, but uh, thank goodness we did not. Um, who knows? And Kirby, uh, just saying, Kirby, uh, I don't know what they were trying to do at the end, but I feel like it was for the better. Like, letting the detective say that she was, in whoop, she was insane. And um, <laughs> that's funny. Um, I feel like that's practically it. I also love how uh, Sarah, um, uh, Sam Carpenter, she replicated her father in a very weird way, which I would like to explore in the next film, but we've explored in this film, so I'd like to understand that more. But that was my some, some of my opinions for Scream 6. I really enjoyed the film. I think it's an amazing film. Really good waste of my money. A uh, really good ways to get a poster. I got my shirt. I was really excited for this film. Really, really excited for this film. And it paid off. Make sure to subscribe. Hit the notification. Love you do. Hit the like button. And this was the Boot Place.